virus transmission is the fundamental mechanism by which all viruses ensure their perpetuation. During intercellular transmission, a susceptible host cell is infected by a virus, replication occurs, and the progeny viruses are released to infect further susceptible cells. But an important step in the life cycle of a virus is its transmission from one infected organism to another. There are various routes by which virus transmission between different hosts may occur. RNA viruses may be transmitted to humans via the fecal oral route, aerosol droplets, dust particles and animal excreta, the bite of an infected animal, virus-infected arthropods that feed on mammals, virus-contaminated needles, viremic blood, sexually, or finally, congenitally. The route of transmission depends on the source of the virus and the ability of the virus to endure the hazards and barriers of the environment on its way to the target tissue. Viruses can spread via the fecal oral route through ingestion of contaminated food or water. When the virus-contaminated food reaches the digestive system, infection begins in the gut. Then it may or may not spread to other organs. Many of these viruses cause gastroenteritis. The virus is then excreted in feces or urine to continue the cycle. These viruses are mostly non-enveloped, which means that they are very resistant to adverse environmental stresses. They can withstand drying. They can even withstand, to some extent, the effects of detergents and extremes of temperature and pH, like, for example, the acids found in the stomach or inadequately treated sewage. Nevertheless, washing hands thoroughly and frequently is essential in order to reduce spread through contact with contaminated objects. Poliovirus is particularly well known for this mode of transmission. Today, hepatitis A and norovirus infections are commonly spread all over the world on food contaminated by unwashed hands. Furthermore, this mode of transmission is a frequent cause of outbreaks in developing countries, where a clean source of drinking water can be hard to find. Transmission of respiratory viruses via the respiratory route is extremely efficient and occurs very commonly when an infected person enters crowded public spaces, <coughs> particularly indoors. Viruses such as the common cold virus, influenza virus, measles and mumps viruses, rubella virus and SARS coronavirus are all respiratory viruses. These viruses multiply primarily in the respiratory tract and are transmitted directly via the respiratory route. <coughs> Infected mucus on someone's hand or objects could be the source of transmission, but not very easily, as there is probably a small amount of viruses found in mucus. These viruses spread from one person to another mostly when the virus in the respiratory tract of the infected host is expelled in large quantities as aerosols. <laughs> this happens mainly during sneezing, coughing, talking or in more intimate situations by the direct exchange of mucus. <laughs> the recipient inhales the droplets, which then infect cells in the respiratory tract. Many respiratory viruses, like for example influenza, have a lipid envelope and that makes them relatively fragile and generally easily destroyed by acid and common detergents. The mucus in the droplets partly protects these labile viruses from the enzymes encountered as they enter the respiratory system during transmission. 
Some viruses may gain entry to the host by being carried on dispersed dust particles. For example, small particles of dried urine, feces or blood can be carried on dust and inhaled by a potential host. The hantavirus in Nombre is a good example for this mode of transmission, as the virus can be inhaled from dried excreta of rodents. Although viruses may enter through the mouth and nose as carried particles, they do not necessarily establish infection of the respiratory system. Following inhalation, the virus develops a systemic disease, and as the illness progresses and a generalized infection occurs, the cells of the respiratory tract may also be targeted. Viral diseases of domestic, farmed or wild animals that can be transmitted to humans are called zoonoses and the viruses are zoonotic viruses. Some viruses can be transmitted directly through the bite of an infected animal. The most common case for this mode of transmission from an animal to a human is rabies virus. The virus may infect and cause a fatal disease in wild or domestic animals such as foxes, bats or dogs. As the disease develops in the infected animal, the virus is eventually secreted in the salivary fluid. At this stage of the disease, the rabbit animal often becomes extremely aggressive and may bite other animals or humans. Today, there is availability of effective vaccines and strict controls over movement of potentially infected animals between countries. Thus, the occurrence of rabies incidents has been minimized in most developed countries. However, in some developing countries, rabies is still a serious problem, causing many deaths each year. Arthropods, such as mosquitoes, ticks or sandflies, may be infected by a specific group of viruses known as arthropod-borne viruses, or arboviruses. These arthropod vectors may feed on mammalian, avian or even reptilian species. This feeding process is known as taking a blood meal. If the animal on which the arthropod feeds is infected with an arbovirus, it may have developed a viremia. In other words, there will be a high level of infectious virus in the blood. Consequently, the arthropod will become infected when it takes the blood meal. After a sufficient period of time, this virus replicates in the arthropod and eventually infects its salivary glands. The virus may then be transmitted to another vertebrate host when the arthropod takes a second blood meal. If this vertebrate host is susceptible to the virus, after a sufficient incubation period, a viremia will be developed. Then another non-infected arthropod may become infected if it takes a blood meal thus completing the transmission cycle. There are many examples of diseases caused by arboviruses. The most well-known in terms of human disease are yellow fever, rift valley fever, dengue fever, Japanese encephalitis and tick-borne encephalitis. For successful transmission of arboviruses by their invertebrate vectors, the climatic and ecological conditions play a major role. For example, virus transmission efficiency is known to be higher in warm, humid climates. Bloodborne viruses may be transmitted through inappropriate use of hypodermic needles. In the developed world, the most common of these is intravenous drug abuse when needles are shared between groups of drug abusers. Hepatitis C virus and HIV are pathogens causing two of the most important emerging human diseases of the 20th century. To a certain extent, these viruses were dispersed as the result of sharing contaminated needles. Another factor contributing to the spread of these viruses has been the lack of knowledge of their existence in blood being used for transfusion.
In poorer areas of the world, hypodermic needles and syringes are often reused even in hospitals. And the blood supply is often not screened for viruses, thus leading to nosocomial transmission. In addition to the risk of virus transmission from blood-contaminated needles, direct contact with viremic blood or tissues may also present a serious risk to doctors, nurses and medical staff in general. Under high-risk circumstances, total barrier medicine is the only sensible approach to reducing significantly the risk of infection. These examples vividly illustrate the impact of modern societal changes and medical practices on humans and disease. Many viruses are transmitted by intimate sexual contact. The virus may be present in the genital area or in genital secretions. The viruses that spread through sexual transmission usually cause long-term persistent infections, potentially enabling the virus to be disseminated over long periods of time. Amongst the RNA viruses, HIV is the most commonly recognized as having a relatively high risk of transmission during unprotected sexual intercourse or other forms of intimate contact that involve exchange of body fluids. Finally, some viruses can be transmitted congenitally or vertically, that is from a mother to her fetus or newborn baby. HIV, rubella, varicella, Hepatitis B and other viruses can be transmitted this way with terrible implications on the growth and health of the infant. <laughs> Considering the modern way of life and its impact on virus transmission and disease, scientists are now working together to develop vaccines and antivirals that will reduce the risks to humans and animals in the future.